lot of questions surrounding the Eagles right now. Like, who's the offensive coordinator going to be? Why are so many coaches refusing to take that job and backing out? Even guys who are staying in college. Why don't they want to take a promotion and come to the Eagles? What are the Eagles going to do to change their passing game to better fit Carson Wentz? What are they going to do in the draft? What are they going to do in free agency? Who's evaluating these players? There are a ton of questions about the Eagles right now. Now, two that have been on my mind that haven't been discussed a whole lot. One, what the hell's going on with Alshon Jeffrey? Why are so many people within that locker room who spend time in that locker room saying he shouldn't come back to the Philadelphia Eagles? And two, are the Eagles ever going to value the linebacking position again? 18th pick in the NFL draft. The d hey! Make us lunch, we're hungry. Dallas still stinks. You're by doing, King Dingbat here, and I hope everybody's having a great day, you dingbats. I hope you all are doing well. You know, this all Sean Jeffrey thing, right? It has me confused and it has me asking a lot of questions. And, you know, in some ways I feel like it almost puts you in a corner where you you don't see a way in which Alshon Jeffrey could come back or should come back because the betterment of the team is at risk. Now, I don't know what's really going on with Alshon Jeffrey and, and everything. All I know is this. There were anonymous sources. Most people blame him and say it was him. He denied it. Who knows? But when you talk to like the media, especially the media that is in that locker room every day, is around him every day. They think it's him. And not only do they think it's him, but they're always talking about how his attitude, about how way he carries himself, it sucks. It sucks. There are articles written that you can't bring him back into this locker room. It's not good for young receivers. It's not good for Carson Wentz. And, and, and it's crazy. And why, if this is all true, which I don't know if it is, but why, if it's all true, would the Eagles have fixed his contract and guaranteed it? I mean, did did he do everything right, sign that contract, and then just become a total asshole? I mean, really? Is that what happened? I, I don't know. I mean, I don't see all Sean Jeffrey yelling at the media, yelling out things, saying things in public. He doesn't do any of that. Now, here's my thought. Alshon Jeffrey is, is 30. I think he looks slow. He looked too big to me. Like, he had put on too much weight. He looked a lot slower last year. Part of it was because of the injury. But I don't think the 2017 Alshon and the 2019 Alshon are the same guy. Um, just because he, he, he looks like a step or two slower. You know? And the way I see the development of this offense and what you should want to do with it, I would want to replace him with a guy with some speed, a guy with some big time outside speed, okay? Now, I don't know if it's possible. I don't know how they're going to get rid of this contract. He's like, I think he's 15 or six, maybe more than that. He's like 15 or 16 million dollars in cap space. If you cut him tomorrow, you would you would have to pay like twenty six million dollars in dead money. The Eagles aren't going to do that. If you trade him, I think it'll be like thirteen or fourteen million in dead money for a year. I mean that that's that's something that you don't want to do. But if you're going to tell me that this guy is going to be a problem in the locker room, that he's going to come in and influence the way guys like Greg Ward, Miles Sanders, other wide receivers, you draft the Henry Ruggs or C.D. Lamb, he's going to influence how they look at your quarterback, how they, they, they treat Carson Wentz or respect him. Uh, you know what? You got to eat every penny. I don't care how much it is. You got to eat it. Jeffrey Lurie's got plenty of money. What was what's, what's $13 million in dead cap space to him? Seriously. For the betterment of your team, if this guy is that corrosive, and I'm not saying he is, I'm saying this is what's out there. If he's that corrosive, you don't have a choice but to get rid of him for whatever it costs. I don't care how much it costs. You know, find a way. Now, now is it true? I don't know. You know, the, the most likely situation when you look at the money and the cap is 
They probably try to trade them, and if and if they can't, they're going to keep them at least one more year. What does that mean? Well, it means you're going to have a slow guy on the outside. So I would tell him, lose 20 pounds. He needs to lose 15, 20 pounds. He needs to lose it. He's also coming off a Liz Frank injury. How, how effective will he be? I mean, running is very important for a wide receiver. Um, I think, I think, I, I, I don't know what to think, to be honest with you. I, I really, you know, back when the Eagles were, there was talk that they may be signing Alshon Jeffrey back in the 20, 2017 offseason, right? Right before the year we went to Super Bowl. I did videos saying I wouldn't pick him up. I wouldn't sign him. And it wasn't because I didn't like Alshon Jeffrey. I did. It was just that I thought, you know, you're going to get two, three years out of him, and then you're going to be dealing with issues like we're dealing with. And we're dealing with it. I didn't think there would be a problem between him and Carson Wentz, and I hope that's not the case. But I, I don't know what's going on, really, to be quite honest with you. It, I, it's frustrating to me because I, I sit there and, and you know, I didn't want Alshon because of the age. I, I wanted younger guys, right? I wanted faster, younger guys. But when we signed Alshon Jeffrey, you couldn't help but be excited about it. Then to see what he did in 2017, you got to love the guy. You got to love him. You got to love everything he did in the Super Bowl. And I do. I do. I like Alshon Jeffrey. I'm, I'm glad that we signed him at, at the end of the day because we went to the Super Bowl, we won it, and we couldn't have done it without him. And he was a, he was he was tough as nails. He fought through stuff, and I have a lot of respect for him. But what's the deal with him and Carson? What really? Does anybody know for sure that he's the anonymous source? That he's a cancer in a lock? Does anybody know for sure? Because if if that's not true, that's wrong. That's wrong to accuse him and put him, you know, give him that label. If, if it's not, and he's not a problem, then we can make it work one more year with him. I, I, we can do it, you know? I wouldn't use him as many snaps. I would, I would move him around. I'd put other guys on the outside at times to get some speed in there. But you can do things with him. But, you know, I, I, I just get so frustrated because I don't know if I'm just buying in what media is telling us. And are they, do they not like all Sean Jeffrey because he refuses to talk to them? Is that the other thing? So they accuse him? I don't know what's going on with the all Sean Jeffrey thing, but it, it's baffling to me. And I think if those things are true, we're gonna we're gonna find out because if those things are true that he doesn't get along with Carson, that he was the anonymous source, that he has a bad attitude, that he he's gonna rub bad negative energy onto these younger guys. If those things are true, the Eagles are gonna get rid of him at all costs, at all costs. So we gotta wait and see if that happens, you know. Um, if not, and he stays one more year, then I don't think it's as bad as people say, and, and they're just they're just going at him. And I feel bad because, like, when I hear all the stuff and see all the stuff and listen to all the stuff, I think, well, I don't want that on my team, you know. But then I think, how, how does anybody really know this is what he's saying? He's not saying anything, you know. So, so we we should be kind of we should we should be slow. To rush to judgment that he's this bad guy and that's it, you know. But we should also keep watch because I think if it's true, the team will address it in the off season. So it's just a bizarre situation. You know, you sign a guy and you put yourself in that situation where you're guaranteeing his money. Then you people are saying he's a cancer. He shouldn't be in the locker room. He's a negative energy. I don't know. I don't know. But it frustrates me. Frustrates me either way. Um, overall, whether he stays or he goes. I appreciate all Sean Jeffrey. I appreciate everything he did to get us to a Super Bowl win. I'm glad at the end of the day that they didn't listen to me and not sign him. I'm glad that they did. Um, but if he is a problem and he is going to keep Carson from being what we saw. I mean, when Car when him and, and Nelson Aguilar went out, there, you, know, you could see Carson Wentz was acting different. Now, I don't know if that was because those guys were out or because he just had a figure it out himself and Carson figured out the whole leadership role and being a leader and he kind of figured it out at the same time that they got hurt but it is interesting and it's going to be interesting to find out now what a man the all Sean thing I I like all Sean and I feel bad sometimes because I'm like yeah we gotta get rid of him and I'm thinking about all the things he did but then I'm thinking well if these people are all right and he's this problem we can't have it so you know I think 
that it will be figured. We'll know the truth whether the Eagles keep Alshon or not. Because I don't care how much the dead money hit is. You can't have that in your locker room. And the Eagles won't. They'll find a way. So keep your eyes out on that because that is going to tell us more than anything. Now, the other thing I want to talk about really quick is something that, that frustrates me too. I guess this is my airing of grievances. I didn't do Festivus for the rest of us this year. This is kind of it. Because the other thing that frustrates me is how the Eagles treat the linebacking position, okay? I, I never saw uh, Concrete Charlie. I never saw Bill Berge, Frank LeMaster. I don't remember those guys. You know, I remember Byron Evans, my man, very underrated, Seth Joyner, Jesse Small, William Thomas, Jeremiah Trotter, Carlos Emmons. I remember really good linebackers with the Eagles, but, you know, as soon as that Jeremiah Trotter got, you know, th those guys kind of got old and went away, it just seemed like the Eagles really didn't value the linebacking position. And then Chip Dip Kelly comes in, and he does. He did value linebacker. He drafts Jordan Hicks, who was a good linebacker if he could stay healthy. If he could stay healthy, and he couldn't. Um, they also brought in Nigel Bradham in 2017, who had a fantastic year. And um, we won the Super Bowl. Now, we're in a situation where Bradham might be gone. Uh, Grugier Hill is going to be gone. And you're looking at your best linebacker is T.J. Edwards, a undrafted free agent who basically made the 53-man roster. Has some upside, but he's the best linebacker you have. Now you're going to go in this offseason. And, and I hate to say this, but I don't see the Eagles spending big money on a linebacker, a big-name linebacker. I don't see them making early picks for a linebacker, it's not what they do. Under Howie and stuff, they don't they don't take or value linebackers in that way. Now a lot of times they like to use only two linebackers out there, but I think they gotta I think they gotta spend some money at a linebacker position. I think they need to take a linebacker in the third or the fourth round. I think they gotta consider it. Sign some of these guys that are gonna be out there. You know, um they they gotta do something at the linebacker position. Ignoring it as much as they do hurts us. It hurts us. I mean, you saw the way they brought Zach Brown in. Nah, he's problem go. You know, uh, they don't value the linebacker. I don't understand it. Some of the best Eagles defense, some of the best teams always had good linebackers. Always had it. You know, Andy Reid didn't value linebackers too much back in those days either, to be honest with you. Because because Ray Rhodes drafted Jeremiah Trotter, right? And then his contract was up. We franchise tagged him. He goes in. He says, I don't want to be franchised. They take it away. He goes to the Redskins, gets hurt, gets cut, eventually comes back. But when he left, there, we couldn't fill the hole. We lost that NFC Championship game. We think we had LeVon Kirkland, who was like 300-pound linebacker. He was at the end of his career eating too many Twinkies. And, and he couldn't cover. He couldn't cover. We lose to Tampa in the NFC Championship game. Trotter comes back in before 04. He starts out on the bench behind Simonow, who stinks, okay? And then he eventually gets his job back, and all of a sudden, boom, we go to the Super Bowl. 2017, you had, you had some good linebackers. Go right to the Super Bowl and win it. You got to have linebackers. And the Eagles don't value them, and they should. They should. So this is my plea to the Eagles. Please value linebacker. I'm not saying you have to get the best linebacker, the top notch, spend the most money, but get guys who are competent of playing. And yeah, I don't want to pay Bradham $10 million a year, but you know, I don't know that you can get rid of him. Who you got at linebacker? You got nobody. So please, Eagles, go out and, and get some good linebackers this year. Get some competent linebackers this year. That, that's my thoughts on these situations. Let me know what you think. What, what's with this Alshon situation? Seriously. And are we ever going to get good linebackers? With that said, take care. Dog deals later. Don't be a dingbat.